What's poppin' man, it's your boy Sterling Sims, RCA Zone. You are now logged into You Know I Got Soul.com, so keep it locked right here, alright? Sterling, earlier this month, you released your new mixtape, Mary and Molly. Mary and Molly. Just, just talk about the inspiration for the project and just tell us a little bit about it. Um, Mary and Molly is hosted by Don Cannon, DJ Active, and DJ Drama. Um, doing a, doing a uh, recording process for 11 Miss Calls, you know, we did like... 30 records, you know, obviously all the records couldn't make the album because um, I'm only choosing 11 for the album. And so I had a whole bunch of other records that I still loved, you know, I think I thought the world deserved to hear it. So um, we put together Mary and Molly, and Mary and Molly is kind of like a play on words, if you will. Mm -hmm. There's two women I like to, I like, I like to deal with, yeah. you, know? <laughs> you know, Mary, she kind of, you know, she, 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 you know, she gives me good conversation. You know, she calms me down when I want to go crazy sometimes. Yeah. You know, working. And um, Molly likes to have fun, man. You know, so I, I call her, you know, she meets me in the club sometimes. And we get it popping together. She wants to drink, you know. Cool. Kick it. <laughs> That's cool. So, you know, in addition, a few months back, you had the, the, the single out and the video for Tell Her Again. It's been right. generating some buzz since then. Um, just talk about that song a little bit and how you created that one. Um, growing up in Philly, um, I think on the East Coast, I think reggae has always been like a, a strong influence on radio. Like, you know, um, in, in New York, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., Jersey. And, um, you know, so growing up, I've always been a fan of the culture. So when we started doing, um, when we started the recording process for the album, uh, Pop Wenzel, a great friend of mine, and um, well, a lot of one of the writers and producers that I work with, he came to L.A. with the idea, and as soon as the track came on, I know it was the Baron Till yeah. record, and I was like, yo, we gotta redo this. You know what I'm saying? And so we came up with the record. It was called Murderer at the time. And, um, you know, it came out crazy. We knew exactly what it was when we heard it. So mm -hmm. um, we did the record. I played it for the label. They wanted to get a feature on it. You know, I called on Meek. I've known Meek for years. Um, just growing up in Philly, yeah. you know, we, we have a lot of mutual, uh, a couple of uh, mutual friends. And so um, I always wanted to do a record with him. I just wanted it to be the right record. Mm -hmm. And so, when he heard it, he heard it twice and jumped right in the booth, jumped right on it. So salute to me, appreciate that, and um, it's been dope. Yeah. yeah, cool. So you know, I've noticed a contrast in, in the sound between you know this is a reggae flavored single, some of the different sounds on the mixtape. You know, what, what would you say is, your, is the sound currently you're going for, and what we can really expect um, on the album and all that? I think for Eleven Miss Calls, I just didn't want to do a traditional R&B album. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just because I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a true fan of all genres of music. You know, so I wanted the, I wanted my album to reflect that. You know, so it's got some grit, it's got some hip hop influence, it's got some reggae influence, it's got soul. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's got some elements of true R&B. You know what I'm saying? So, I think it, it, it you're going to get, you know, a, a sense of what I like to listen to when you listen to this album, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of honesty. Yeah. <laughs> and and how's the whole project progressing so far? Um, I'm about 95% done with it. Uh, we just got some tweaks. I recorded a, I recorded six records last week that I think were like the last pieces to the puzzle. But, but uh, you know, I just like to work, so I'm gonna stay in the studio until you know we're, we're mastering. But um, I think we're, I think we're about there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, I know you work with the stereotypes a lot, pop and oak a lot. You know, mm -hmm. who, who have you worked with overall on the album? Um, in addition to stereotypes and uh, oak and pop, we worked with. Fista Cuffs, who, worked with, who works with Miguel a lot. Um, I worked with, uh, let me see, DJ Camper, who uh, who worked with Pop on Marvin Gaye Chardonnay, um, who was actually in Hawaii working with Kanye right now. Like his sound is dope. Mm -hmm. And so um, he sent me a folder of joints and we went in it and we cut those last week. Um, I think that's it, that's about it. Yeah. I kind of, you know, I kind of wanted to keep I didn't want too many different sounds on the album. I wanted it to be, you know, cohesive. So mm -hmm. I kept the writers and uh, and producers to a minimal, you right. know, just so we could have a cohesive sound. And, yeah. You know, the records, the records come out came out incredible. Cool. Yeah. So you know, speaking of the stereotypes, how did you originally link up with them, and how did that whole situation come about with them? Oh, um, the stereotypes. Actually, I, uh, one of the stereotypes name is Ray Row, and me and Ray Row have been have been great friends for a long time, and. Actually, he was the A and R that signed me over at Def Jam when I was at Def Jam at the time. And after he left Def Jam, he started producing, and you know he, he linked up the stereotypes. And um, when I got off of Def Jam, I started working with them. 
and the records that we were doing over there were were dope, yep. dope as shit. So yeah. um, um, that was actually what gained the attention of RCA. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we we played them a few records, and you know they pulled me into the building. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So salute to the to the Titans. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and my and brethren and them. <laughs> In terms of Oak and Pop, you know, you've been collaborating with them for years now, and they, they've been blowing up, you know, recently doing a lot of big hits. Yeah. How did you originally link with them? Um, well, I've been I've been friends with Oak for I worked with Oak for a little over a decade. Um, man, we that shit goes all the way back to, to us recording in his garage. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, um, it's it's amazing to see how far he's coming, where he's where he's at now. Yeah. Um, and Pop. You know, found Pop on MySpace. <laughs> he had been on MySpace like six years ago, and um, you know, it, he, he's the same way. It's like it's, it's great to see. It's great to see my family because you know I'm mm -hmm. sitting on like my brothers. It's good to see my brothers. You know, finally getting that shot and finally winning. Yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying putting points on the board and yeah. doing it in a, in a in a major way. You know, what I'm saying. Um, but it's it's like it's almost not fair working with Open Pop because they know a little bit too much about me. <laughs> so it's like they are, they already knew, they already know what I'm gonna like and what I'm not gonna yeah. like when the, you know before I get to the studio. Right. So okay. talk about your writing a little bit. You know you're an accomplished writer, but you've also co-written a lot with the Night Riders and all that whole situation. Right. Is it tough for you to write on your own or, or with you know as a co-writer? Um, What's more challenging? I think it depends on the, the it depends on the song. Um, it really depends on the song. Sometimes I, I find it easier to write if I have, if I already have a vision for a record. Sometimes I'll, I'll just go in and I'll just I'll just finish it out. Mm -hmm. But in, you know, sometimes you know, multiple brains are always better than one. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we're in it, like I, I like to co-write because you never know what the next month what the next month might bring to the table. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we'll listen to some songs and it's just like yeah, I'm gonna bring somebody else in on this to see what they, to see what they go right. with. You know what I mean? And then we just go from there. Okay. So it really depends on the scenario. It depends on the record. Makes sense. Yeah. And now, you know, you released your debut album on Def Jam, you know, a few years later you got released from the label. Um, was that whole situation discouraging for you and kind of how did you rebound? And, and um, it wasn't discouraging at the time. I, I, it, to be honest, I kind of wanted off. Um, like, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, I'm grateful and I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity. There's no bad blood at all. You know, I still, you know... Um, I still thank LA and everyone over there at the time for the, for the opportunity. You know, it just didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it just didn't work. And I think, I think my brand was, um, I think the vision for my brand was a little lost at the time. Yeah. And so, you know, when the album came out, it was kind of like that. I guess they just needed to get the album out. Mm -hmm. But to me, when we put the album out, I, th I felt like the album was just a poor representation of what Sterling Sims was. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was. I think it was, it was just a bunch of dope records with no cohesiveness, you know what I'm saying? So, um, with that, I wanted, you know, I wanted to go somewhere and just start fresh, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I'm at RCA now, and it's been, it's been love. They, they've been supporting me and my vision, my creativity, and so, you know, the, um, they've been trusting, you know, with the records that we've, we've delivered so far, and it's been a great, it's been great. That's you know, great, man. Really Glad great. to hear that. Thank you, man. So just just to kind of wrap up, you know, I mentioned your writing earlier. Are you currently doing any writing for other artists at the time? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back in now because the past, really like the past year almost, I've been like so focused on getting this project yeah. done, get my yeah. album done, and so um, now just as of recently, I've been reaching out to other people to you know to see what they need for their projects. So mm -hmm. I'm working on a couple other projects. Right cool, now. cool. Yeah. So that's all we got for you. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, make sure you grab that mixtape if you haven't, Mary and Molly. Um, check out the, the the newest record. You know, just gonna jump off the mixtape called "Make You Somebody," featuring Two Chains, Tiger, and Travis Porter. New visuals visuals coming soon, and new album coming soon. Cool. That's it.